Very good evening to you with the CBC Sports News. I'm Damien Best. All round the Dwayne Bravo produced with both bat and ball to help West Indies finally secure a victory over Sri Lanka. Playing in the second and final T20 today at the Prima Dasa Stadium, the Windies defeated the host by 23 runs to level the series one all. Winning the toss and batting West Indies got up to 162 for six in their 20 overs. With Dennis Ramden 34 not out from 36 balls and Johnson Charles hitting 34 from 42 balls with the leading scores there. Bravo chipping in with 31 from 37, while there were two wickets apiece for Melinda Sriwadana and Lasif Malinga. In reply, Sri Lanka were all out for 139 in exactly 20 overs, with Bravo returning to take 4 for 28. Telekaratni Doshan made 52. Here are the highlights of that run's chase. 7.5 at last delivery. And that's taken. And uh, that's a catch of an athlete. And Chandimal, this time he's out. Picks the man at backward square leg. Wilson down the wicket and hits it straight. And it will go all the way. And that's his 50. He's 11th T2050. Oh! Now will that be taken? It's oh great catch! Great catch! Oh nicely hit. Just leaning into it. It goes all the way. Connected with that well. One bounce four. Percent. Launches again. This time it is Charles. It is the catch shaken. That was a vital breakthrough again, and that's the importance of Sudan Narayan. Out towards long on and taken. Kyron Pollard. Another wicket, another catch. Sunil Narayan, a fourth wicket for Dwayne Bravo. Clean them up, the West Indies win, and move up to third in the rankings. Gives them some measure of consolation. Yes, a win is a win. It's important. So West Indies ending the series with just a single victory after two tests, three ODIs and two T20s. Milton Lynch, Eden Lodge and Bailey's Primary all booked quarterfinal berths when the round of 16 began today in the Guardian Group Herman Griffith Primary School's cricket competition. Joining them will be St. Stephen's who enjoyed an 11-run win over St. Albans at the Desmond Haynes Complex in Holders Hill. Batting first, St. Stephen's posted a competitive total of 175 for four in their 25 overs, led by an unbeaten 93 from Chaz Searles. CBC's Anne-Marie Burke was there for that innings. Since Stevens' opening partnership yielded 34 runs before Achilles Brown went caught by Azari Williams for 14, Jabari Kamabash the bowler, St. Albans claimed their first wicket. That brought in Chaz Searles and from ball one, he showed he meant business. That's four. Wicket number two will be that of Kobe Williams, a brilliant one-arm catch by wicketkeeper Joshua Clark. I'll show you it again. The score, no 38 for two. Two balls later, Clark would feature again, this time taking Rashad Worrell, who went for a duck. The score is still on 38. But Searles continued to beat ball, edging this one to the boundary. Getting sweet water bowling, he decided to go big. That was six, even the fielder signaled it. Searles was taking no mercy on the bowling, another big one. He was racking up the runs fast and furious, making light work of most of the deliveries he faced. Another teammate would fall Alexander Brown right into the hands of Jeremiah Worrell since Stevens 77 for four. Searles was really making a mess of the bowling attack to the boundary it goes again. And soon enough, with this big six, he could raise his bat, a well-played 50. He was St. Stephen's anchor man. 
Kimani Blackman joined him and the boundary fever caught him too. He made it two consecutive, the second straight driven right towards our camera. And speaking of consecutive shots, Searles went big in the final over. Ball one, a six. Ball two got the very same treatment. Ball three saw some nice footwork, the outcome yet another six. Two singles were then taken before Searles finished it off in style. This one dropping just inside to roll into the boundary. St. Stephen's 175 for four in their 25 overs. Kimani Blackman, 29 not out. Chad Searles, the star boy, ended on 90 not out, inclusive of seven fours and nine big sixes. Anne-Marie Burke, CBC Sports. Well, thanks, Anne-Marie. St. Albans in reply were 164 for nine in their 25 overs, as Chad Searles was also good with the ball, claiming three wickets for 19 runs, and Kobe Williams took four for 23. In the other matches, Eden Lodge advanced via a three-wicket victory over St. George, Bailey's defeated Luther Thorne by four wickets, and Milton Lynch beat Sela by 74 runs. Former International Association of Athletics Federation President Lamine Diak has resigned from his position as an honorary member of the International Olympic Committee. Diak had already been provisionally suspended by the IOC while he's being investigated by French police over allegations that he took bribes to cover up positive drugs tests during his time in charge of the IAAF. He'd already resigned as president of the International Athletics Foundation, that's the charitable arm of the IAAF, which he'd been head of for 16 years. Meanwhile, CNN visited the now infamous anti-doping lab in Russia, searching for explanations. Behind gates, locked to the public. This is the secretive Moscow laboratory at the center of Russia's doping scandal. Its work is now suspended. The director telling CNN he's resigned to protect the lab's reputation. Trust you. But no one here wants to talk about the explosive allegations of drug it's cheating 90, now engulfing Russian athletes. Yes. Do you know about the cheating that's been taking place here? Do you know anything about it? Do you want to talk to us about it at all from CNN? You don't want to talk to us? Right, well, the, uh, the employees at this lab are clearly being very tight-lipped, but the report from the World Anti-Doping Agency goes into great detail describing the alleged activities inside that building. It's saying that you know, this is meant to be a place that roots out cheats among Russian athletes, but in fact it worked hand in hand with coaches and with Russian officials to cover up positive doping tests with the explicit purpose, the report says, of getting Russian athletes to win at major sporting competitions. Eine Geschichte, die schon im Kleinen. Athletes like former 800 meter runner Julia Stepanova, featured in this documentary for German television last year. She's admitted paying a bribe to cover up her own positive test and says that doping is a routine part of Russian athletics. The coaches have it hammered into them and the coaches hammer it into the athletes. Therefore, the athletes do not think when they're taking banned drugs that they're doing something illegal. But now Russia is paying the price. At the Sokol Stadium Club, the next generation of Russian athletes are being put through their paces. This is a country that sees itself as an Olympic superpower and the threat of exclusion from the Rio Games next year for cheating has left Russians in shame and disbelief. This is a disgrace for Russia. Our sportsmen should not act like that because they have always been the best. I feel ashamed for them. How can they possibly compete in the Olympics now? I think all of this is a provocation because there is no proof. They just say there is an ex-athlete who was caught doping, saying that everyone was doping. It seems to me this is not true. Hello. Hi. Do you know anything about the cheating? But in a country that spent billions on Olympic venues, simple denial may no longer be enough. Well, the hockey facility at the Garfield Sobers Complex could soon have a new AstroTurf. That's the word from Secretary General of the Barbados Olympic Association, Erskine Simmons, who is hoping that action returns at the venue by next month. 
basically through our partnership with the International Hockey Federation as well as the Pan American Sports Organization, it was through that initiative that we were able to secure the turf in its first place. Um, it is true that we are working with the Barbers Hockey Federation in making sure that this turf will soon be um, brought out of, the, out of the port and laid. And the National Sports Council. And the National Sports Council. And we are actually working with um, the, the, the persons, the experts who will have to come to Barbados to actually lay the, lay, the, lay the turf down. So we're working favorably to get all this com completed. I certainly hope by the end of the month that this will be all started in, in, and hopefully by December the turf will be up and ready to, for competition. Well, that's it for sports. Coming up next, the Business Report.